The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento again, and it's my pleasure to be here. Futures Hour, and of course, we'll go straight into the futures. And looking into the futures, we see that the e minis it's had a spectacular run. Was in a trading range. If you're looking here at Tiger, oh, did I forget again? Tiger TV. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you will see that in the uh, uh, in the spectrum of the 1424 area high in the September e minis back around the 21st of August to the 1398 1395 low. We've been bouncing around mostly in the lower half from 1412 down to 1394. Every day, I, my service here at TFN, besides my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tiger Technician's Hour, 11 o'clock till noon, uh, I also have a service called the Opening Call. And in the Opening Call, I always show, if I can, the 10-minute chart, but always the 120-minute chart. Usually it's the 10-minute the chart plus the 120-minute chart, I do not give um, directional indications. I give parameters to look for and what to look for to assist in evaluating whether it's going to break resistance levels or support levels. And in this particular case, if you're looking at uh, Tiger TV, you will see that in the... Uh, period that I've just spoken about, I've also drawn a rectangular blue resistance line between about 1216 and about 12, uh, 14, that should be a 14, 1416 and 1412, <clears throat> and another one between thir uh, 1394 and about 1400. Most importantly, what it is showing is that if there's a break below or above either one of those levels, and that is held on a closing basis on the 120-minute chart, this is what I'm showing you right now, 120-minute chart, then there's a very good chance that you will go towards the next important level. In this case, I said to subscribers, a break above 14, 12, 14, 16 could be very positive if it held. And look what's happened. We went right through the 1424 high. Let me squash the chart so you can see how important it is. That's open territory. That's very good action. And the 10 minute chart has made a number of uh, Chapman Wave in the chat. Let me just quickly describe my, my work. I look for the lowest low bar, the most obvious low bar. This is the easy way to do it. And I merely want to count e four successively higher highs. I grade them. Peak A, B. If B is taken out by C, invariably you will get a D. And, <coughs> excuse me, in the less than 10 minute time frame, I use something called the phantom peak. Rarely do I use it in the, hundred and, in the 10 minute chart. I prefer not to. But I've done it here only because there have been two since the low today, that low back at uh, 1407 after 1407 soon after the economic news came out, which seemed to be good, then it seemed to be bad, then it seemed to be good, then it seemed to be bad, and we down, touched the 200 period exponential moving average, the blue line, this movish line. So we went up to peak A at 1412.50, had two parallel highs at 1419.25 at 950 and then 10 o'clock. 
I call that a phantom B earlier on. I've raised that to another phantom B at 1427.25. I prefer in the 10-minute chart not to have any phantom peaks, but to go to a D, and then you'll get a more serious, you can get a more serious pullback. So the C is 1429, hit twice the two highs at 11 o'clock and 10 minutes past 11. Remember, this is a 10-minute chart. Now we are working on leg D, 1430.25, if the next bar closes under 1430.25, without hitting 14, 14, 30.25, 30.25, what will happen is I'll get a peak here. I've caused it a gray D. Because the MACD and Stochastic are holding so well, I'm anticipating that we could, in fact, go a little higher to leg E. And then I think we start to see some kind of a digestion whether we digest into the close or like, and I've got an email right here that I'm going to read. Like so many people, you're preparing to either go short or go long or to go long, and you wanted to see how the reaction early this morning was, but you never got a chance to get in. <clears throat> Those are the people that will probably push it into the highs of today if we see that there's a high-level consolidation. Now, I was talking with uh, Joe from Boston, um, uh, yeah, was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday when I did Larry's show, I believe it was, uh, straight after mine, that was the 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock time frame yesterday, and I was discussing a, a number of aspects, and he was long Google and short Baidu, and I called it like a currency pair, and I congratulated him because I said, Google looks like it wants to go higher, and it should go high, and here it is in leg E. And Baidu looked like it could continue lower, but be careful of the bar that goes below, and I was looking at the 120-minute chart, goes below 110.13. So I said to him, that's the bar that it has to close on the 120-minute chart, has to close at the low, because if it just goes down, this technique in the Chapman Wave methodology says be careful because it'll go underneath and if that same bar cl closes above, what it's saying is, I haven't said goodbye to my friends yet. I want to just quit, go back and say goodbye and then I might drop further. But be careful because you've got to take profits very quickly if that's, that's your end game. It's a short-term trade if it starts to rally back above 110.13. That's exactly what's happened with Baidu. Now... Uh, this, is the, this is the futures hour, so I just wanted to show that as part of the technique because within that, yesterday <clears throat> I was also talking um, uh, I during the show with, uh, with um, I, I, I think I, I brought it up, and I'm not sure if it was in my show or Larry's show, but I was talking about the TFU12. That is the E-mini, uh, the, the mini Russell 2000 September two, uh, 2012 contract. And what I said is the way it's acting is very positive because it was showing, and I went to the 120, I, I went to the daily chart and I discussed a number of the techniques that I use. I'm trying to build up these techniques. I'm trying to show them here because I, I'm hoping. I, I love doing this. I do this every every year. I have a number of these workshops. I haven't had one in a little while, a live workshop. Um, and it's it will probably be a two-day work uh, seminar that goes, mm, I usually goes from 8 or 8.30 in the morning until at least 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon, two days, two consecutive days. Because these are the techniques that I've spent, my my adult life working on. You see this in the in the in the uh, Russell 2000 September contract. Back in April, on April the 30th, it hit 825.10. It pulled back, went to a low of 722.10. There's a technique that I call the plumb line. Now. Sometimes you have to move the plumb line a little bit this way and a little bit that way. The best is when you can get a cup or an arch formation that makes a trough or a peak, whereby it turns out that that is exactly the midpoint to the same number of bars on the upside back to or toward or just above that left side high or a left side low if it's an arch pattern. Well, look at this. On the... 5th of July, one day early, the left side, right side, time,
price match was almost hit. Instead of um, 825.10, let me type that in so I don't know what I'm doing here, 8, 825.10, it went to 822, I think it was. It went to 820.50. So it's come all the way back from the 720 level to a doji candle in what? In the Chapman Wave, we look for the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher high. And you label them A, B, C, D. At D, that's when you can expect a possible pullback. And the deepest and longest one doesn't have to happen, but that's where you've got to prepare. And that's where you look at the technicals and the chart formation. Yeah, the stochastic, that's this bottom series of technical indicators, the yellow and red line, cross negative. And right over here, the fast-moving average of the MACD was starting to turn down. Now look at this. You come back down and you went to a higher low at 759.20, started to peak ABC, left side, right side, price time match. It takes it out one bar early this time above it. It actually goes right to 826.80. That is, in fact, 70 cents above that previous high way back in April. What I'd said is we're going to see tomorrow that these rising cup formations are building power or whether it's going to be a failure pattern. And a failure pattern will say that it cannot break decisively on the close, that's the daily chart, above 8 to 6.80. But if it closes above, first of all, if it goes above, I said that'll be a leg D, and that's the, that's the very key leg here, because if a power's higher, it's a pattern that I, I much prefer to the cup and handle, which I really dislike intensely, and it's not that they don't work, it's just that they fail more often than they work, I, in my opinion. I love the cup and ladle breakout pattern, which means you slice to the left side high. That's the high of the 21st of August of 826.80. Smash through it and you go and close much higher. And that's what we're doing so far today. Why do I say so far? Because I'm looking at a daily chart. I can say specifically that the 120-minute chart has gone... <laughs> Let me just see, A, B, C, D, brand new A, B, C, no, this is still C, that this, this is in leg C, but I can say specifically that you've bounced off the 200 period exponential moving average in the 120 minute chart, I can say specifically that we have, cl we have closed above 823.70, the higher of the fourth of, those are specifics. I have to wait for this 120-minute candle to talk about where it is closed, then I can be specific. So all I can say right now is, so far, the stochastic is not at 80%, it's at 75%. That's a heads up to say, hey, be careful, because we might be running out of upside uh, room. If this is going to uh, run out of steam, you've got to wait until the end of the day to see where it closes. Now, the weekly chart is very important, because the weekly chart has gone. This is the... E, this is the the mini Russell 2000 contract. The 841.50 high that was made in March of this year is being approached. It's at 838.60. We want to see it break above it, and then we'll talk what is the lettering. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pasavento. I want to take your calls at 877-927-6648. We'll look at the euro and all sorts of things. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You 
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Hi, folks. Bells Chapman. We are back, and I'm just going to run through a bunch of charts, and then I want to answer some. I've got a couple of emails. In fact, it was very nice to receive some emails yesterday because I did... I, during Larry's program, I'm going to do more of this tomorrow in my own show at uh, Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 because it's more appropriate rather than using this time. I spoke about, uh, I had been asked a couple of weeks ago about stops and buy stops and what I do. Uh, what have I found to be the best and most effective way of doing it? And basically, if I'm wrong, I'm out. That's just the way it is. I make tight stops, I'm out. Because I know in my work, if I'm correct, we know it just works almost immediately. And then we've got a nice cushion. That's the way we do it. Now, here's something that's very important as far as I'm concerned. I'm just going to run through some charts. It's just purely by chance. I saw it go by in the ticker on CNBC. It never had the volume. I just have the ticker running by. Actually, I've started looking at Bloomberg as well because uh, it's also pretty good. There's a V-shaped pattern in, in sugar. Sugar has gone all the way back in a cup left side. Perfect, not a perfect, almost a perfect left side, right side. Price time match from the high of, this is the contract, the October contract, back on the 9th of, of April, a 24.19 high. Plummets down to a trough E at 1924, and then it comes back to within fractions of the previous price. It goes back to 24 round number high. I love these round numbers. This is a futures contract. 24 round number high on the 23rd of July, just misses the previous high, just misses in time by three days, the exact left side right. But the inside wedge gave you that picture of what it's going. That's that dashed line. 
technique that I've developed in my, in my CD introducing the Champion Wave methodology. You can see how that works. And only available at TFN. And then it comes back in what I call the Eiffel Tower formation. Just straight up and then straight down. And what does it do when it comes straight down? I'm just drawing this in now. You can see some of my techniques. There are just so many techniques. I always want to use the one most applicable because they're always changing. It comes right back, and two days ago, it breaks the left side, right side price time match. The 1924 low of the 4th of June gets taken out yesterday and closes below it at 18.98 low. Closes at 1901 yesterday, and today it's struggling to try to bounce. Technicals are not very good, and the, uh, there was a C1, C2 top. You remember we are talking about this in the Euro, which I'll go to next. Those C1, C2, a technique that I developed over, uh, it's been a long time, but really over the last year, and especially over the last five months, I've been spending a lot of time discussing it. And it fails at that, makes a, a peak G, a very rare peak G top in the July of uh, last year. And now it's down, testing the 200 period exponential moving average, that purple mauve line. In, in there's that upside single leg A pattern. I call it the single leg A phenomenon. Why? Because they can very often fail and go straight back down without making a B. And in the monthly chart, sugar is, I can't do this, I have to go to the continuous contract. I want to show you some some methodology, some way that might be able to help you um, in these techniques. It went to uh, PD in the monthly chart in February of 2006 at 2334 and now it's making a multi-year low going into the lows of 2000 to 2001. So that's sugar. Now I, I wanted, I wrote a whole bunch down here. Um, I want to go to the EUR USD because it's so so important right now. This is the euro dollar currency pair. Making a leg be up in the weekly chart. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. That's the middle chart that you can always see in my charts when I show them. And then I close it and I put it like this. And then look at the monthly. I'm expanding the monthly. Look how the monthly made a big H pattern, lowercase h pattern, which turns into the M pattern. Remember Baidu that I was just talking about? Well, the bar that goes underneath the previous low, in this case 1.8758, that was the low of uh, June of 2010, it went under it and closed above it. That's just be careful because you could bounce and you could bounce to the nine period moving average, which is 1.28 in the um, in the monthly chart. But it needs a lot of work to be able to generate the kind of power, the kind of torque, the momentum to to break above. So this is the euro now, the euro dollar currency pay monthly. Now let's talk about what I spent a lot of time on yesterday. That is the euro, and we had a call uh, or a question in the den uh, from um, one of our uh, uh, terrific denners who uh, does a lot of work on the currencies, and this is the daily chart. Now, let me expand it so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Remember I was talking about the C1, C2 tops, but it did exactly that five, four times, I think it was five times, ever since the high back in... February of this year. I'll be back. Basil Chapter is singing for Larry Preservento. This is the Commodities Hour. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30 day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Hi, folks. We are back, and I'm busy showing you charts. So I showed you the chart. I've been going through so many charts here. I'm charted. I charted out. I can't remember which one it was. Um... That was sugar. Okay. Now, this is going to be very important because high-grade copper, remember I spoke about high-grade copper as well yesterday? Uh, just for the moment, I'm going to go to the Yukon track. It's not been probably it's already moved on. just want to show you this. I'm going to actually go to the continuous contract of high-grade copper. What is very important, what I'd say is if high-grade copper is able to, spoke about China, but I also said that if high-grade copper is able, first of all, to break about 3.5155 this week, that'll be a leg B, and it's just down there, so it's got a little bit of a leg B with a 200-period exponential moving average in the weekly, strong resistance. To really be decisive, it has to, to show that it's a powerful move to the upside, it needs to get about 3.6, and that would take it into that gap area uh, back from uh, early May of this year. So, so far, nice action. Not great action in copper, but nice. Now, what's important about the HG, I'm just going to go to the U because I've already got it charted, um, is that it's in leg C, and it is tempting in the left side, right side price time match. It's a little late. Now, I have to now move it over to the next key metric, and that would be there, and here we go, and I'll tell you what I'm looking at then. If it continues to rally, then this line here, oh, that works out fine. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's there. Th that would target somewhere between the 10th of September to about the 11th of September for copper, 
the copper contract to pierce the left side high of 3.558, uh, 3.455. Yep, 8.5 of the 3rd of uh, July. Now, that's going to be very important. Why? Because if copper really shows strength, and if stocks like a Ford, which is moving beautifully today, I missed it, I had it on, I wanted it as a buy, I missed it, it went up, and that's going to take me to my first uh, email that I'd like to talk about. And then the other one is GM, which I didn't have. I've been looking at it, and it's at the 200-period moving average for the first time. So it's saying there is... Internal strength, if the orders are moving higher. Copper is a general broad market uh, economic strength, an international sign of some kind of strength. It was Brent. Uh, yeah, what was the symbol, Z, if you can remember? Because uh, I did a lot of work on it. I just can't remember the symbol because it's something I don't, I don't trade um, at all. So... Um, so this is a comment in the den. So that, that's why I looked at copper. That's why it's very important. Let's look at bonds. If you look at the U.S., I'll go to the U contract, although they're probably trading the Z. That made a peak C. Now, it's under the nine-period moving average. The stochastic's still at 86%. That's good, and the MACD's good. So there are a number of conflicting patterns. I call them conflicting just for the moment. They could resolve um, um, very, uh, very soon. But we have to put it together with my three bears, which one of uh, one of which is the volatility index. Like the TLT, a peak C, almost to the 20, uh, 20 level that I said is critical because the close over 1972 into the 20s will weaken the market. So this is a pullback that's very important. Stochastic still at 80% of the MACD is good. And then the final one is the dollar. And the dollar is testing. And I said it's got a price point of today, if this is going to be accurate, um, to try to test the 81.19 area, and today's low is 81.02. So it's done that, and it's in a down channel. 80.73 is the 200-period exponential moving average, which brings me back to the euro that I was looking at. Now, you will see in this particular chart, I'm going to run this quite quickly. This is this is ready for folks who, who work with the Chapman Wave already understand it. We made, we made an overlapping peak D top in the euro at 1.45485 that was back in um, back in 29th of August of last year but the, the high that was really important was 1.49398 at a peak D top in the 4th of the 4th of May of last year since then there's been a decided downward move some of the tops were peak CC1 uh, I don't want to get into that there was a peak E top and at 1.424 in the euro dollar currency pair on the 27th of October. Then there was the left side, right side price time match. It held, made another little arch formation, and then plop. Remember, I always say, once well, just go visit his friends before it says goodbye. And now it's goodbye, and it's been since the 1.312 level was broken. It went all the way down to 1.26233. It went to peak A, B, and then that double top of peak C1, C2, where it just fails to make D, pulls back, makes another one lower down, using the 200 period moving average, look at that line there, as a resistance, like a repellent line. It's like it can't get there. It's a magnet and then a repellent. Do you know how you can take a magnet with a piece of metal and it, it, it pulls the metal towards it, but if you turn around, it propels it away. It's the, it's the opposite spectrum. So now look what we've done. We've gone to the left side, price side low, under 1.2623 in the euro, went to trough F, had another little visit back to say goodbye to the friends, went to 1.22873, back again into that arch formation to C1, peak C1, C2, pulls back, breaks under it, and look what we've done. We've gone from 1.204, you've gone peak. Now let me expand this so you can see what I'm talking about. There it is. The up, it's really not an up channel. What I like to do, trade what you see means that you also got to plot what you see. And what I did is I plotted. I had shown yesterday that there was a potential triangle formation that looks like a, a butterfly. I, I'm not getting into that right now. Another technique that, you know, it's not my technique. I use it as a complementary technique. Remember, I spoke about techniques that complementary techniques must be additive. If something, if you have a robust technique, 
There shouldn't be conflicts. There should be additive material. When there's a conflict, you've got to decide between the two. I always say go with what you know that works best. So now look what we've got. We've got a breakout to leg F, and that's what I was talking about yesterday when I discussed it, but within the cell zone, in the Chapman Wave CD, introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, I go into a lot about the cell zone. It's actually a borderline, an inside track, I call it, and that's usually the repellent area. Would it be a repellent in leg F? That's usually where you get the sharpest decline. Well, wait a minute. It's holding the 9 EM8, went right to it this morning. The MACD is still very strong. Stochastic said 85%. I suspect there is a chance that we either have a high-level consolidation or it recycles. That's why I've got a peak, a leg F slash B, because if it pulls back tomorrow, and Monday suddenly makes a new high, I'm going to probably call that G slash C, meaning my preference is that I need to keep the old notation just extending up alphabetically because you can never go above a G. And then all of a sudden, the next letter will be a D. And that D says, okay, now you've got to be careful. So uh, this is for those of you who know my technique. Most importantly, the euro is holding really well. In the, in the daily, the weekly, as I said, it's a nice effort if on Friday it can close for the third week above the nine-period exponential moving average, above 1.2480. That's a big positive. It says you could pull back, but you're probably going to go higher. And try to test the previous high of 1.2748 or a little higher. So I wanted to cover that. Now, the question I had, um, Basil. I get so frustrated when this happens. I waited and set up for the Dow, Dow, DIA, that's the Dow Diamonds, weekly peak C to D play. So let's go to the Dow Diamonds, DIA, and that is a leg C. And in the Chapman Wave, what you expect is if everything is constructive, there should be a D, of, that would be above 1.3302. The high today is 1.3282, so it hasn't done it yet. So the, uh, my subscriber says, because he's been to my Master Trader series. Overnight, um, overnight, and this AM, this morning, this setup is wiped out on news events. The weekly is almost at the last peak C in a matter of hours. How can one play this market? Yesterday, late afternoon, I was a, a click away from shorting, especially when I saw the transports hammered. You remember, I didn't even talk about the transports yesterday because I was focusing on my three bears, the dollar, bonds, and the volatility index, as well as that... Uh, Russell 2000, the positive action in the Russell 2000. I didn't want to be distracted. Yes, okay. Thankfully, I saw it as a coin flip and waited one more day. I guess I hope for uh, a, middle, a, a bit of a pullback tomorrow and try to get a few on reaching PD in the, in the weekly. So, ugh, best plans, but no idea how to execute that. Um, I figure that you've been through this as well. And yes, of course, I've been, I'm, I'm through it today. I had six positions I wanted to put on, long positions this morning. And I didn't want them if they gapped away. So I just had to step aside and say, listen, we'll have to wait. Uh, the, my three longs are doing fine. They, they're up. My two shorts uh, are still uh, making money on the downside. What more could you want? I, I, I wanted to be able to get uh, that back again. So question of the den is, oh, Basil, what if you close near 126 peak F doji high? Let me get to that in a second because there was another another email, there are others as well, but let me just get to the just came in. Basil, um, uh, a current subscriber, significant move up today above the resistance levels you published this morning for the Dow, Diamond, Spy, Qs, and so on. Also, the TLT is at 125, much below the 126 support level that you mentioned. Based on today's actions, I was simply wondering if you might push out an update to your charts. You know, I don't. I used to do updates. Now I very rarely do it. Why? Because over the years I found that... Once it worked unbelievably well, I think it was in March of 2008, uh, 2008 we got a fantastic move down the, uh, the DXD, 200% short the Dow. Uh, and that's the only one I ever remember. Every other time, I think the very next day, I could have got an even better trade. I'm not going to put out an update. Everything in my newsletter was right there for us to see, as well as the fact that the financials were doing better, and that was very important. So I was along the queues with October 67 calls at 2.45. I sold at 2.89. Hey, congratulations. You made a fantastic move. Correlated to the queues at approximately 69.22. As I write, the queues are at 69.33. So it looks like I sold too early. A profit with a plan is the, is the most constructive thing, the best thing you can ever do. Congratulations. Don't be upset about selling too early. That's, there's no such thing. 
you sold with a profit, you can rethink it, there are other things to do. Um, uh, so, and then he goes on about the leg E, etc. I don't want to get into that. It's a little bit technical. Tomorrow I can get more into the technicals of the Chapman Wave. So, congratulations. Now what I want you to do, the question of the den, I like to answer questions right away. That's what I do in my Master Trader series because it's current, it's fresh. The question is, what about if, the, if you close at the round number? In the currencies, I'm not that concerned with the round numbers. It'll be amazing if it closes at 1.2600. But, uh-uh. I'm looking at the 120-minute chart, and the 120-minute chart has made a potential D slash C, and all the technicals know the MACD is still very strong, stochastic's down a little bit. I suspect there's going to be another attempt to try to get to 1.26513, which will be a penny higher and above the high of today, and that will be leg D, and then we might see a pullback. But at this particular point, the most important thing was, you remember I talked about the 120-minute chart, peak C1, C2, I said because it pulled back, didn't make a new low. There's a chance that you can make, this is yesterday we were down. I said there's a chance you can make new highs to make leg D because that's the characteristic of this particular technique. I spent months and months studying over and over again, and that's what happened today. So I want you to go through that, and right at this particular point, I must wait for the daily to close. Now, there are other things we need to look at. Um, let me just check any calls. Oh, 877 Hey, it's very quiet there. You don't need to be quiet. Let's just get going with those calls. Um, so, I don't, yeah, it's the Brent. I don't remember the contract. Oh, I wish I, I thought I wrote it down. How dumb can that be? R-B-O-B. Ah, oh, R-B. That's what it was. R-B-Z-12. No. <laughs> it looked exactly like that. So maybe it's a different R R. I want you to talk about it. ZQ. Let's get a Q. Oh, it was V. R B V twelve. There you go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I do so many charts. It's amazing. Look at this. This is the October New York Harbor Blend stock. Stock? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a that's a crude oil, isn't it? And, and look at this. I uh, questioned the Dan. Yes, I'll get to was it B, uh, BZH. I will look at BZH in a moment. The monthly chart of RBV, which is whatever this is, New York Harbor Blend. I think it's a crude, some kind of kind of some kind of oh, some kind of an oil, uh, heavy oil maybe. Well, it'll make a D in the monthly if it can go above three point oh four. It's a three point oh one right now. Now this is very exciting as far as this chart is concerned. Just on a chart basis, I have no idea. I never trade this thing. I often see it by mistake and then never remember it. It made a perfect peak, A, from the 200 period exponential moving average to A, B, C. Where did it go to? D. So it goes from 2.3 on the 7th of October to where? On the 16th of March, it goes to 3.04. It makes that Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, capital A notation, pull back and breaks the 200 period moving average, goes under it all the way to one uh, 2.20, and now it's in A, B. But if you know my technique, I call this gray. I change the color, and I'll explain why. Because I need to see how it breaks above 3.04. Because it made a lower low, if this breaks above 3.0402, the high of the 16th of March, that is a powerful move and it's going much higher because it's a brand new buy mode. Look at the MACD at 94. Look at the stochastic. Uh, uh, stochastic at 94. Bowser Trap at 877-927-6648. Um, and I'll be back with Dave and Boston straight after these messages. Very important messages. Dow's up 231. S&P's up 26. Oh, I never mentioned that earlier. I'll look at that as well. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, 
Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Wow, I can't believe how quickly time flies. You just got one little segment to go. And we've got Dave in Boston. Dave, how are you? Basil, how are we doing today? Hey, very well, how are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Great. Hey, I wonder if you could take a look at uh, Bank America on a 60-minute... Uh, uh, a chart, or daily chart, actually. It looks like August 21st, we hit 840. Yep. And we're up to 130 million shares today, and we're coming into that, uh, we're coming into that swing point. I'm, I'm wondering, do you think we can take that out? Yes. I love, I love the action of the financials. The 120-minute chart is in leg C. Um, my guess is that... Uh, Bank of America, BAC, which is trading right now at 8.31, is acting extremely well. I'm just so upset with myself. There were just so many stocks that I looked at yesterday that were showing the, this kind of breakout potential. The speed is really phenomenal. But what I want to see is the close. It's a daily chart. We're talking halfway through the night or halfway through the day. If it can not break under 8.22 today, but instead close above 8.28 make a new high if it can tackle the inverted Roman candle bar of the 21st of August at, at, at the one that has a high of 840 
by Monday, this thing could be at 842. I like the action very much. I, I think the XLF is acting well. JP Morgan's acting. There's some stocks there. That, so I like it. Do you have it? Yes, I, uh, I picked it up a couple days ago, under 8. Very good. Because I like so, the way it was... So, I, it was it, it, was, it was consolidating below that line, and it just looked like it was coiling to make a big move here. Absolutely. Now, just before I forget, 822 was the high back in June, a week of the 22nd. That's A, and we've gone to B at 840. So at 841, starts leg C up. It's a very weak, in the, monthly, in the weekly chart, it's a very weak W-E-A-K rally so far. But it's a very positive one because the stochastics are already at 82%. If it can hold there, MACD remains positive. I like this action. What I would say to you is some part of your position should have a stop at about eight, eighteen, $8.18, just in case it, by the end of the day anything could happen. I love what's going on right now. Congratulations. Thank you, Ray. What do you think upside on that first high, about 874, if we break that 840 level? If it breaks 840, 844, 917 would be the high of the week of the 20th of uh, April. That would be a target for me. And uh, just I'll go one step at a time here. So far, it's very good. Thank you very much, Basil. Thank you for calling. Let's go to Ari and Arcady. We'll look at the GLD. Hi, Ari. How are you? Pretty good, Basil. I was wondering on the on your long-term chart of GLD, the one that showed the channel? Yes. We're it's broken out. We're close to slipping into that channel. Well, we're out of the down channel. So let me just do this, folks, before we run out of time. The GLD trades at one-tenth the price of spot gold. It's the Spider Gold Trust. It made a high peak F in the trap wave of 185.85. That's where you can expect the longest and deepest correction, which is kind of what we've had in terms of time. Maybe not the deepest. The deepest was back in 08. But it's held very well, and there's a mini up channel dash line. I wonder if I can show it here quickly. The dash line, that dash line was taken out, but there's a declining line that's resistance, and it's above that. So all I can say is that the technicals have not improved that much. The stochastic has turned up. I will not fight it because the dollar is pulling back. Platinum, I didn't have a chance to show, is doing very well. Some of those other materials are doing very well. Uh, um, um, um. Uh, metals are doing well. I like this. I think it's acting very well, but it is a potential peak F, which means that just on a very short-term basis on the daily, we've got to see how Friday closes. If it closes above 166.50, that'll be very good. Underneath 164, and you can expect a consolidation to 162. Hope that helps you, Ari. Thanks for calling. Folks, Thank Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pazvent. I'll be back with my show. Don't forget my service is the opening call. I'll be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock for my show. Stay tuned, and I believe right now we go to Daryl Martin.